Hello, this is Garrett McKenzie, Plastic 411. You're watching a video from the Process Troubleshooting Series. It's offered on YouTube channel Train Plastic 411. This is a series of instructional videos for helping to troubleshoot defects. If you're interested in training in your plant, you can contact me at training at plastic411.com or 470-767-2957. Happy molding and make good parts. Hi, welcome to the Plastic 411 Process Troubleshooting Series. This particular presentation is on fixing flash and plastic injection. So as you see in this picture, there's flash on the part. And there's a number of things that you look for when you're looking at flash. You're going to want to look and see if the flash is heavy and thick. If it's heavy and thick, that's generally a sign that your temperature is correct, but potentially either your hold pressure is too high or it could be that there's tool damage. So if you've managed to rule out the fact that heat probably isn't the problem, the first step that you're gonna take is you're gonna to wanna to clean the mold you're going to get in and you're going to clean the parting line and you're going to also inspect for flash around mold components and you're going to inspect a tool for damage around the parting line um, if you think that there might be damage what you would do was in the area that you're getting a flash you would blue add bluing agent to the parting line area and then you would close up on that you would do it on one side of the mold and when you close up on that you're going to put it under tonnage and pull it back and if there's no damage then the bluing should be evenly uh, positioned across both sides of the mold if there is damage you're going to see uh, areas where the bluing agent did not take in which case you know you're going to have to do some tool repair to fix it you're also going to want to inspect the tooling components. You're going to want to look for damage and wear. Um, you want to look at, make sure that pins, as far as uh, guide pins and uh, slide pins, that they're working properly, that slides are actually locking into position correctly. There's no slop. And then you're also going to want to pay attention like in the picture below, is the flash moving from one area to the next, or is it consistent? Is it, like in the picture that's shown, you're actually seeing that the flash is towards the end of fill, so it could possibly be a velocity problem, or perhaps the mold is not uh, flush, you're not, you're actually seeing a little bit less pressure on one side of the mold than the other, in which case you might need to consider shims. So the next step that you would take is you're going to want to verify your process. So what you're going to do is you're going to remove your holding pack because you want to verify that the process has been decoupled. If it's been decoupled, then you're basically going to see that 95 to 98 percent of the part is full and with that 95 to 98 percent you're either going to have a very small short or the part's going to have a sinky appearance and the one thing to remember is rule number one if you have a short shot and you're seeing flash that generally points towards a sign of tool damage of some sort whether it be a component or parting line damage. Uh, another thing that you're going to want to look at is you're going to look at your end of fill set point. Uh, basically you want to verify that uh, the fill is proper. If, if the part is completely filling out and you've removed hold and pack then you, you know that you're actually filling too far. And Another thing you want to look at is you want to look at the location of the flash within the injection profile. If the flash is occurring over and over and it's apparent that it's a 
appearing in the same place within the injection profile. For instance, say that two thirds of the way through your injection, you're getting flash, then it might be something that you can correct with, with within your injection profile. You might be able to slow down injection as you flow through that area of the part. And then lastly, you're going to want to look at bounce back. So what I mean by bounce back at cutoff is when you inject forward, you're basically watching your screw. And if the screw moves forward and once it reaches cutoff, it actually bounces back before going into hold. That's generally a sign that your cutoff is set too low. What you want to see is you want to see the screw come forward and then a nice smooth transition from injection into hold pressure. Finally, you're going to want to review your tonnage setting. You want to verify that tonnage is high enough to prevent flexing. You can actual, actually measure flexing to make sure that tonnage is high enough. Um, and also, you're going to want to verify that the press size that you're using, the size of press that you're using, is big enough for the tool size. If you put too big a tool into too small a press, then you might end up getting flash. You might be better off use, putting that tool in a bigger press to get a better result. I hope that this information helped, but if you have any questions or if you're interested in training through the Plastic 411 group, you can contact me at training at plastic411.com or you can also call me at 470-787-2957. I hope that this presentation helped you with troubleshooting the problem that you're having. And like I said, you're always free to call. Thank you. Time.